Thank you. You may be seated. If you do not have our teaching syllabus on dispensations, you may look on the back of your bulletin today, and it has an outline of what we're talking about. It's not written out like it is in the syllabus, but uh, you can follow it a little. It is so wonderful to know something about tomorrow. It is so wonderful to know about tomorrow. The world doesn't know, has no idea. And if you told them about it, they wouldn't believe it, which doesn't change anything at all. Your beliefs and unbeliefs and disbeliefs doesn't touch God at all. He's got it all planned, and uh, whatever you may think about it, you better think with God because it's going to be his way after all. God anticipated when he created man and put him in the Garden of Eden that that would be the headquarters. The Garden of Eden would be the headquarters of mankind, and out from there, there would go persons, human persons, all over the earth. And at that time, possibly as you realize, the, uh, the, there were no continents. The, the earth ball was in one piece, and the water part was in another piece. Uh, and, uh, and if you took a map and tried to put it together, you could see that they were in, in one piece. Uh, it, the Word of God says in Genesis 11 that in the time of Peleg, God divided the earth. And so the division of the earth was after the time of Noah. That's the reason you find people at the North Pole, the South Pole. That's the reason you find people in little islands. That when the earth was divided, that's where, that's where they were at that time. And so they continued to live in those, in those places. And it was just after the time uh, when God had created all the languages, after the Tower of Babel. And so uh, they, that's the reason you have all the different languages in the different areas of the world. But one day the Lord's going to put this thing back together again. And, and we're going to have one earth. And we're all going to speak one language. Uh, all these great wars that you have in the world right now, well, they're language wars. You don't speak my language, so I have to kill you. And so uh, uh, that one language, and the Bible says it will be a pure language. There is no such thing as a pure language on the face of this earth, but there will be a pure language that God will create uh, and the Lord Jesus will create. And that will be a thousand, a thousand years of peace. And then... At the end of that, at the termination of that time, there will be what we have on page 50 here, the time of the great white throne uh, judgment. Uh, this judgment will not be a trial judgment. You won't go there to be tried to see if you're good or bad. Uh, it is a reporting system that will be there. Uh, and you will not be able to say anything unless it's yes or no. The one on the throne will do all the talking, showing you who you are, what you are, and possibly was the most remarkable systems of putting a thing before you that, you, that the poor little earth people have ever, not, not ever dreamed about, and, and moving it before you to show you not only your deeds, but also your thoughts of that which you wanted to do. And at this judgment scene, it will be the most amazing thing uh, that, that, that the universe ha has ever known. When the judge of the universe uh, has the time of the great white throne uh, judgment. Uh, in your introduction, it says, every sinner who has ever lived on the earth will stand before Jesus Christ one day and he will be judged at what is called in the Bible the great white throne judgment. There is a lot of information in that one line there. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous information. Uh, this is the moment when all transgressors will be, will be judged. You say, well, they're already judged. Well, only partially. As you've heard me say before, if a, if a man killed a man out in front of this building at this moment, he would not be put in a penitentiary today. 
he would be put in the local jail today. And after some time, a judgment will be set. And then the judge would determine how long he had to live in a prison house after that, maybe a hundred years or maybe total life or whatever. And, and so it's the same in the universe. Uh, when you die, you go to hell and there's fire there. That's the jailhouse. But if you went down to the local jailhouse and you talk to the people down there, and I have done it many times, hardly one of them will ever tell you that he belongs there. He says, I shouldn't be here. It's wrong. It's wrong for me to be here because I didn't do this and I didn't do that. And I, well, he hadn't been tried yet, you see. Then there comes the trial. And then the witnesses come forth. And the neutral person called the judge, he listens to what is being said. Then he gives the man the judgment according to the evidence that is spoken there. That's what the great white throne judgment is for. There are a lot of people in hell that are saying, God has not done this thing right and I shouldn't be here. So at the great white throne judgment, it says that every sinner who ever lived, that goes back to Cain, comes right straight down through to the Antichrist. All through all of the dispensations of God uh, that we have been studying about for several months, all the wicked dead, now this is not for the righteous dead, those that are righteous, they were judged at Calvary. There will not, not be any further judgment for them. You say, what is the, what is the, uh, the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ has nothing to do with destiny. The judgment seat of Christ has to do with the receiving of position in the millennial reign. So these two judgments are 1,000 years apart. The judgment seat of Christ uh, is, is, at the, is at the time of the rapture. Uh, when, when you go forth to, uh, to, to have that, that, that beautiful moment when you sit with Christ uh, and uh, he gives us what we're to do and, and, we, and we have the marriage supper of the Lamb uh, at, at that moment. And then when we come out from there to fight the Antichrist with, with Jesus, then we all have positions. And then he shall reign for a thousand years and there will be peace on the earth during that time. And we, the redeemed, shall judge the earth with him. We will be appointed by Jesus. We will not be voted in by anybody. And on the earth here, at, during that 1,000 years, uh, it will be the most glo It'll be exactly what God wanted from the very beginning, you see, that man should live on this earth without a tormentor of any kind. E even serpents will not bite. And, and even a lion will not kill. Um, that all came because of the, f of, of the fall of Adam when all, all creation fell with him. Even the ground uh, was never again like it was before. Uh, God said, now by the sweat of your brow, you're going to have to live now. Well, before that, it was not by the sweat of his brow. When he fell in sin, uh, the whole of this earth form here, it fell with him and has been under that indictment and under that judgment ever since. But that will cease at that 1,000 year reign of Christ. And then after that 1,000 years, all the wicked dead shall come forth, uh, the sinners. Because most of them will say, I'm not treated right. And I didn't do this and I didn't do that and I shouldn't be here. And they shall come and stand before a great, uh, you ought to put a circle around these different things for you to have a good understanding of them. Great is the greatest judgment uh, setting in all the history of mankind. Uh, billions of people will be there. Not millions, but billions of people uh, will, will, will be there. It is great. And then it will be a great white throne. Uh, we will be discussing white throne here uh, in, in just a moment. And then it says that every, every monarch who has not served Jesus will be there. Uh, isn't that something? Every man who thought he was great will be there on his knees, bowing down, calling Jesus Christ King of kings and Lord of lords. What a sight. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna behold. Uh, they will be bowing before the throne, 
And then there must be a judgment day so that every human who has ever lived on the face of this earth and has not served God and will know that he is judged righteously and properly, the judgment will, will be what's right. Uh, I don't know whether it's in this lesson here or not. Um, one, of, one of our national ministers uh, this weekend uh, had no answer when they said, how about the poor people that have never heard the gospel are they lost? You see, and the preacher said he couldn't answer it. I, I hate to see both of them stupid at the same time because when the preacher's stupid and the other questioner's stupid, then you got two stupids. Uh, the, Bible, the Bible says that every man will be judged according to what he has done, you see. He, he, he will be judged that way. Now, I've lived with most primitive people on the face of the earth. I have never met a primitive person, whether it's a little thing like this or a big thing like that. I have never met a primitive person who did not know right and wrong. Right. So at the great white throne judgment, they will be judged by what they have known. I have never in the whole world found a people that didn't know it was wrong to steal. Well, then he will be judged by how, how much he stole. Are you here? And so everyone will be judged. Did you know that we all have the same conscience? It don't matter whether you're born in Africa or Asia or, or the North Pole. We all have the same conscience inside. God put the conscience in there. And that consciousness tells you what is right and wrong. Did you know that a lot of very primitive people have a lot better morality than the bunch that you live around? And they've never heard the word Jesus yet, but they have a conscience inside. God put it there. And so the whole world will be judged on what he understands from the inside of him. Are you here? The judgment will be correct. It will be right. And it will be good. And it will be according to the deeds that are done in this body whatever you've done in this body. You say, well, what if a man uh, breaks no commandment? He breaks no commandment, but he has never heard about Jesus Christ. What will happen to him? I want you to leave that judgment to the one who, who can read the inside of a person. Are you here? To, to, to leave that with God. There are so many things in this universe that we simply do not understand. And until we get to the other side, we will not understand it. And it is not necessary for you to understand everything. There won't be 10 people here that understands advanced mathematics. I sat with a Jewish young man in this city uh, a few years ago. And he said, did, did, did you ever, ever study mathematics? And I said, no. And he began to tell me things about the one, two, three, up to millions. And I sat there bewildered. I didn't know you could screw mathematics around <laughs> like a scientist can do it, you know. He can run in multiples that will amaze you. He can play with those numbers in his brain uh, until you sit there saying, I wish I'd have taken mathematics too. It's a, it, it, it is very remarkable what man, what man can do. Now, every human in the world, God has placed within him some abilities. It don't matter whether he has ever heard about anybody else in the world. God has placed with him abilities to know right and wrong. My wife, when she was a missionary in Argentina, was out giving out tracts one afternoon. And she came to an old woman sitting down on a little doorstep of her house. And she sat down by her and said, Mama, uh, do you know Jesus? And she said, no, I don't know Jesus. It says, do you know salvation? No, I don't know what that word means, no. It says, well, would you like to receive Jesus? She says, I don't know. She says, I know one thing. I am very, very sad 
inside of me. I'm so sad. And then my wife said that she, she made a swerve of her hand. And she looked at my wife and said, you know, I heard that everybody is sad. A little ignorant lady that had never been to school, that didn't know anything, she knew that there was an emptiness inside of her that needed to be filled with something, you see? And God is the answer there. And then she knew more than that. She had already heard that not only was she sad, but she switched her arm way like this and said, I hear everybody out there is sad. Well, we, we just know that this, if you will do what God wants you to do, be what God wants you to be, live by what you know, then you're going to have a good relationship with God. Yeah. But I have never met a person among these primitive people of the world. They said, we know this is wrong, but we do it. I haven't met one of them that has the ability to keep the commandments that's in his insides. Never met one. A man out there wants to commit adultery because there's something else in him gnawing away for him, to, for him to do that. He knows it's wrong, but something inside. Well, then you've got the whole situation. Man needs to be born again. Man needs the Lord Jesus Christ. So it gets to be a very simple situation. Then all of these people must come and stand before the judgment. They died, but they're not judged yet. And they will have to stand before the great white throne judgment. Now open your Bibles to the book of the Revelation, chapter 20. We'll, let us start in verse 11. This great apostle, the one that loved Jesus so very much, named John, he says, I saw a great white throne, and him, say him, a person. No, no, no. He didn't see an idea, and he didn't see a ghost. And him that sat on it, from whose face, say face, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Now, 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 I don't think you could have a more dynamic verse of Scripture or verse of anything than that right there. It is awesome. It is simply awesome to know that this is going to come to pass. He said, there will be a great judgment, white throne. And I think the lesson here will possibly tell us more about the, white, the whiteness of that throne. And it was so awesome that from the face of the person, not his legs, not his toes, but from the face of this person, that even the earth and the heavens, meaning the atmosphere above us, it fled away from him. And then I saw the dead, small, poor little people, and great, the mighty generals and the kings and the potentates. And they stood before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened. Now you've got two sets of books here. The books were opened. That's the book of your deeds. God has re recorded every deed that we have committed from the time that we had a, a consciousness of sin. All of those deeds have, have now been recorded there, good or bad. And then another book was opened. And that's the book of life. That's the book where they record the names of the redeemed, the book of the redeemed. That when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved, he puts your name in his book, not the book of death, but the book of life. And you are recorded in there with those that shall live forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. And this other book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, two things. The book of record, where every, every sin has been recorded. There are no Christians at this judgment. I've already told you that. There are no good people at this judgment. This is the judgment of the wicked dead. 
that have gone on before and the reason they're judged, they have not been judged before. As Jesus said, and the rich man died and in hell he lifted up his eyes. The rich man in hell burning says, I have five brothers, go and tell them not to come here. So it was an instantaneous jail that he was in that had fire in it and hurt in it. And he wanted to get out of the thing, but he couldn't get out. Now that man will come to the great white throne judgment because he will be saying, what am I doing here in this torment? I hadn't done anything bad enough to go to hell. Why, why, why should I be here? And so then in order for the whole universe to be correct, then God brings out the books and says, well, let you have a look at yourself. I will show you yourself so that you may see just exactly what you are. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books. Notice there's an S there, books. Uh, and, and that is the book of life and the book of record. According, and they will be judged according to their works. You'll be judged according to what you have done in your, in your lifetime. And then it says to know who these people were. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. And, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man every man, according to their works. Now you say, well, tell us more about that. Evidently, hell has degrees in it. And, and, and uh, the very, very, very wicked people will be in a different section than those who were not very, 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 very wicked along with him. They will be judged, every man, according to their works. Now that wouldn't be there if they were all going to get the same judgment. But the Bible specifically says they don't get the same judgment because they will be judged according to their works. And then verse 14 says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Now that's the prison, that's the eternal prison house. That's the end of all things. And this is the second death. So when we talk about the second death, we're talking about eternity and hell. The first death, uh, is, is a limited death to where you go to hell if you're unrighteous or you go to heaven if you are righteous. And, and so, uh, it, but the second death uh, is, is, is when you have the resurrection of the ungodly and those who've been against God. And then he says, and whomsoever was not found written in the book of life. Well, not one of them. Their names will be in the book of life. But they will see the book of life and say, this is the book of those born again people. This is the book of those that love God. This is the book of those that serve God. Let's see if your name's in there. And he says, uh, they written in the, and the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Everyone whose names are not in the book of God's life, they were cast into this lake of fire, which is the ultimate judgment. There is no further judgment. It, that is the ultimate judgment. Now, look at your point number one. It says, why? Why is it called a great white uh, throne? It is called a great throne because it is the supreme court of the universe and in the, it is the supreme court of all history. In, 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 in our world that we live in here today or in our country, uh, you can have a little small court downtown here, uh, maybe just for the judge present. And if you don't like what goes on, you can put it into a higher court. And if you don't, if you don't agree with that, you can put it into a, a higher court. So finally, you can take it to Washington, D.C. before those seven, eight, or nine people. And that is the supreme court of the land. There is no greater court. You cannot... You cannot say, I'll take my case higher. It is, it is not possible to go higher. That is the end of courting in, in our country when you come to the Supreme Court. And so this is the Supreme Court of all history, and it is the eternal destinies of men who have not served God, and then they are, and their eternity is resolved at that point. 
I would say that it is called the white throne because of the immaculate majesty. I think God the Father will be there. God the Holy Ghost will be there. And the Lord Jesus Christ, possibly seated in the middle, dressed in garments of white, and the crystal white throne, it will be, it, it, that he will be seated upon. So here we have the total of heaven judging the total of man, and that judgment will be forever.